Now, I have an important announcement before we start today, that this Saturday, September 21st, our very own Elon Levy will be debating Al Jazeera's Mehdi Hassan in New York City. Now, if you are in New York, you can actually go and buy a ticket yourself and attend in person. But if you're not attending in person, you'll still be able to watch a live stream of the event wherever you are in the world. You can also host a viewing event. And if you want to host a viewing event, please go to our social media pages and find a link for more info about the debate. It's in our Instagram and X profiles right now. If you just click that link, you'll find a form to fill out and we'll send you all the materials needed to help you have a successful viewing event. Now, all the relevant information and links will be on our social media platforms today and stay tuned for more posts. Now on with the daily briefing. Today is day 348 of the October 7th war. Now you've probably heard by now that thousands of pages simultaneously exploded in Lebanon yesterday. No one has taken formal responsibility, but Hezbollah is saying that Israel is behind the strike. The detonation of thousands of Hezbollah issued pages at the exact same time is the most precise targeting of combatants in history. Close to 100% of casualties are Hezbollah, and that is unprecedented in warfare. These pinpoint strikes represent a warning to the terror armies of the world that they cannot hide behind any technology in order to enact their terror agenda. Those like Belgium's Vice Prime Minister condemning this precise strike as a terror attack are really telling on themselves. They regularly demand a magic wand war that only injures bad guys, and they actually got it. But that isn't enough. It seems nothing is. They're actually saying no attack on Hezbollah is okay, while any attack on Israel's people seems to be okay. Hezbollah, Iran's proxy army in Lebanon, has launched over 8,000 rockets, missiles, and drones at people in Israel since it declared war on October 8th in solidarity with Hamas's October 7th massacre. 60,000 people have had to flee their homes in northern Israel because Hezbollah is targeting civilians. And Hezbollah regularly shoots guided missiles at civilian homes in Israel. Hezbollah fired a rocket that murdered a dozen Arabic-speaking children who were playing soccer in a field in northern Israel. And Israel already set the gold standard in combatant to non-combatant casualty ratios in urban warfare in Gaza at one to one, or frankly, even better. That meets and exceeds ratios of other Western militaries. So let's be clear here. It was never about protecting Lebanon civilians. It was always about Hezbollah's continuing assault of Israel's civilians. Let's also be clear about something else. What happened wasn't assorted beepers blowing up around Lebanon. It was specifically Hezbollah distributed beepers that blew up, meaning that anyone with a beeper must have received them through a Hezbollah distribution network. That's why Iran's ambassador to Lebanon was injured. That's why dozens of pages exploded in Syria and Iraq, places other Iran-backed militias attack Israel from. Now, the UN Special Coordinator for Lebanon said that the detonation of thousands of Hezbollah's pages marked an extremely concerning escalation. But I've got to ask the question, concerning for whom? Degrading Hezbollah's ability to keep murdering people in Israel is not an escalation. It is an attempt to stop Hezbollah's war. And let's take a look at the timeline as we know it so far. Hezbollah has been daily attacking Israel since October 8th. Monday evening, Israel's cabinet updated its war goals to say that the 60,000 people forced to flee from Israel's north must be able to return home. At 2.30 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon, Israel announced it stopped a Hezbollah plot to assassinate a senior former security official. And at 3.30 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon, the beepers blew up in Beirut. Israel has done everything over the last year to avoid escalating the war Hezbollah is fighting. But Hezbollah continues to attack again and again. Israel is saying Hezbollah must back off and end its war, or else Israel will do what it must to end the war. Hezbollah was warned. The whole world was warned. All right, let's take some questions live from our studio audience. Thank you, Asher. This first question is about an IDF press release that went out this morning, which said that overnight, a drone from Iraq was on its way to Israel and was intercepted. Is Israel in some kind of war with Iraq? 
This is a very pertinent question and relates precisely to the point that we keep making here at the Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's Office. Israel is facing a war on seven fronts. Let's be clear here. We're talking Gaza, the West Bank, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Iran, uh, and, and in the wider diaspora community. We need to be absolutely clear here. This attack from Iraq is part of the wider network of exactly what we're used to seeing. We are seeing the Iranian-backed militias spread their web throughout the entire region in an attempt to surround Israel as they have done so for so long now. They are seeking to create this goal, create this web of indefensible, uh, attackable militias that Israel has to respond to. And that is why we are seeing attacks coming from all sides. That is exactly why we saw a ballistic missile cross Israel coming from Yemen and the Houthi pirate uh, militias from the south. That is exactly why we saw when these pages blew up they didn't just do so from the Hezbollah distributed network inside Lebanon. They also did so in Syria and Iraq. What does that tell us? That tells us that the network that exists in, 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 by Hezbollah in Lebanon that is funded as a proxy via Iran exists throughout the entire region and Israel must confront it wherever they find it in order for there to be any sense of peace, stability and security within the region. This is a question from our Instagram. The Israel Defense Forces on Wednesday announced the deaths of four Israeli soldiers, the injury of several others during fighting in the southern Gaza Strip the day before. What's going on in the southern Gaza Strip? Is there still fighting? Um, what is the situation that Israeli forces are facing there now? Yes, well, unfortunately, there is still fighting. And as we heard, the terrible news that there were, in fact, four further soldiers killed in fighting in the southern Gaza Strip in a booby-trapped home. Uh, the likes that we've seen Hamas uh, build up and, and develop throughout this uh, entire war that has gone on for almost a year now since uh, the Hamas-led October 7th massacre. You know, this is exactly the sort of action that we see in urban warfare. Uh, the utilization of homes, the utilization of civilian infrastructure by militants and terrorist armies in order to enact their heinous agenda. Uh, and this is what we're going to see if there is a continuation uh, or escalation of, of warfare uh, on any front. And this is precisely why attacks such as what we saw uh, with the highly targeted pager attack in against Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon, Iraq and Syria, as we said earlier, are so critical when used as a deterrence mechanism, as a way to cut the head off the snake of these terrorist armies that would use any means necessary in order to enact their agenda, even if it means putting their own civilians in harm's way, let alone the civilians and soldiers of Israel or whoever, whomever they perceive to be the enemy. This sort of uh, action is going to continue to ongo in a war, an, war, uh, urban warfare environment where Hamas continues to regroup uh, and attempt to attack Israel in whatever way they can, attempt to try and eke out uh, petty victories, even as Israel does successfully uh, remove them from much of the Gaza Strip and try and take out considerable amounts of their terror infrastructure. Uh, we are going to see this until some sort of ceasefire is reached or until we are able to achieve the three Ds of the dismantling of Hamas, of the disarmament of Gaza and of the de-radicalization of the Palestinian people. It is critical that we achieve those goals uh, by the time we reach some sort of ceasefire and into the future and if we're going to have any sort of stability and certainty into the future of this region because these deaths, frankly, are unacceptable. This is a question that came through right now on our Instagram Live. Why isn't the Mossad taking responsibility for the precision pager strike? Look, as we understand uh, right now, we do not know who was behind the precision pager strikes. Yes, there are reports uh, coming out from U.S. officials, uh, certainly accusations coming from Hezbollah and Lebanon and others. This strike, strike was uh, orchestrated by Israel. Um, but frankly, Israel is not in the business of putting forward exactly what its precise tactics are used at a given time to disclose who may or may not be behind any particular action. But it's not really relevant who in spe specifically was behind this action at a given time. What is relevant to know is that this action was incredibly successful in its aims, in wounding thousands of Hezbollah militants who otherwise would have been ready to fight, kill, maim, and murder, and continue the ongoing war that they have been perpetuating against Israel in the north of Israel, leaving those 60,000 plus uh, people in Israel unable to return to their own homes. Things that led to the incidents such as the terrible death of the 12 Druze children, Arabic-speaking Druze children in Israel's north, who were simply playing in a soccer field in Majd al-Shams. 
you know, these sort of incidents are what we could expect from a future of an empowered Hezbollah. And anything that cuts the head off that snake and weakens them is critical to any of those who would uh, promote peace, prosperity, certainty, or stability in this region into the future. And it is critical that we applaud and recognize the value of such operations, no matter who is behind them. And I think that's the key message to take away today. The current headline in the Times of Israel is ex-defense minister Ya'alon was target of Hezbollah bomb attack in Tel Aviv last year. This article is mentioning that there was a bomb attack in Tel Aviv in September 2023 before October 7th where Hezbollah tried to target the former Israeli minister of defense. Does it surprise you that Hezbollah intended to attack in Israel a month before October 7th? Certainly it doesn't surprise me. These are the aims and goals of the terrorist militias and terrorist armies that surround Israel. As I said earlier, Israel is surrounded on almost all sides by these sort of uh, Iran-backed proxy militias uh, that exist with the sole purpose of trying to destabilize Israel and destroy it uh, as a de facto way of attacking Western civilization, uh, US uh, control in, in a larger sense, and sort of to try and uh, diminish and destabilize the region as best they can in order to uh, build their own power. This is exactly the MO uh, of these sort of terrorist militias. And frankly, it goes to show to credit and skill the capacity of the Israeli intelligence services, uh, both in Israel and without, in order so they have the capacity to prevent these sort of actions from occurring. Uh, Something that they work stringently and tirelessly to do with hugely committed resources. Something that Israel is constantly having to face time and again and again throughout this region. Israel is not in a friendly neighborhood. Israel is in fact surrounded on many sides by enemies who would seek its destruction and would seek to harm it and destabilize it in any way that they can. And going after a defense minister uh, with a a sort of a a targeted assassination attempt, even in what is supposed to be a time of relative ceasefire and and relative, uh, we'll call it sort of stability as it were, prior to what we saw on October 7th when Hamas unilaterally launched its assault uh, on Israel and massacring uh, Israelis. This is exactly the sort of MO of what we would expect. And frankly, it is just fortunate that Israel was able to use and leverage its power, its capability, and its intelligence to prevent them from enacting their horrific vision for the Middle East. We have time for one more question, and this will be the final question. What is your message to the people of Lebanon who have no connection to Hezbollah and are worried about a wider war that will reach their own homes? I would say and speak clearly to the people of Lebanon to say that Hezbollah are the oppressors. They are oppressing your people by taking your resources in order to build their own military infrastructure at the expense of civilian, by sucking your economy dry of meaningful resources while you struggle to power your homes, to fuel your cars, to put food on your family's tables. I would say that Hezbollah, with their Iranian interests, are not aligned with your interests in any way, shape, or form. Hezbollah do not seek for the betterment of the Lebanese people. Hezbollah do not seek for the fulfillment of enlightenment. You even look at the tenets of what Hezbollah stands for. They stand as a resistance to other forces. They don't stand in any way as a positive and empowering force to the Lebanese people. And that is a key message we would take away. To the people of Lebanon, Israel does not have an issue with you. They have an issue with this militant force that has co-opted your country, taken over your military and political forces, and has again and again and again over the decades drawn your country into unnecessary wars with Israel that Israel does not want. Israel and Lebanon could in a future potentially be allied in an alliance, be in peace, have normalized ties as was proven with the Abraham Accords for other countries within the region. And this is a future that is available to the Lebanese people if only you would throw off the yoke that is Hezbollah and see a brighter future that does not involve these heinous, authoritarian, cruel terrorist armies at taking control of the region and taking control of your nation. That is the key message that I would take away today when it comes to the people of Lebanon. All right, that is all we have time for today uh, on today's Daily Briefing. I will say to please make sure you check us out again tomorrow. I'm sure there will be a lot of new updates uh, happening over the next 24 hours with so much happening within the region. So at uh, 3 p.m. Israel time, 8 a.m. Eastern. And also, please make sure you check out the links for the upcoming debate with Elon and Mehdi. It is certainly going to be a fascinating one and definitely not one to miss. So check out all our socials. We have that information there available for you. I'm Asher Westrop-Evans. Thanks for watching.